Hello everyone and welcome to Position Specific and welcome to our brand new Coaching Journey 2. Now just before I get into um, this coaching journey um, and how it's going to work, um, I just want to take a little bit of a moment um, just to kind of explain um, for a lot of our subscribers who've been asking the question uh, where we've been uh, for the last 18 uh, months to two years um, and why we haven't put any content out up until now. Um, well the reason being is um, we really wanted to um, get all of our kind of um, content in order and um, we wanted to make sure that everything was finished we felt that at times we had uh, large parts of it that were complete and we felt like we had large parts of it that weren't complete or weren't in the right order that we wanted it in um, and we also realized that um, for the full package we were missing um, some big sections as well so we just thought um, for the best way to serve coaches and now players um, we wanted to take some time and get everything in order um, and get everything um, to a certain point um, where we could put it out and we could be proud of it. Um, and that'll be um, leading into our uh, brand new website, which I'll talk about throughout this kind of first introduction to our coaching journey too. Um, and I'll talk about it in a little bit more detail at the end. Um, a couple of other things as well is like we've had obviously some personal and professional changes. Um, which is why, which leads on nicely to um, why we are doing a coaching journey too in the youth development phase in the USA. Um, and this is at grassroots level. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about that um, as we go on to the next slide. Um, but what you can expect from week number one um, is I'm going to give you a project overview um, of why the USA um, and why grassroots level. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, our position specific um, club curriculum, um, which will uh, mention the website um, to you guys as well. Um, we're going to give you a team overview um, of the team that we are working with. Um, and we're going to give you the team plan um, and effectively the whole plan of this coaching journey um, for the next um, two or three months. Um, and then we'll talk about um, the first session um, that we did with the team um, and show you some bits and pieces from that as well. Um, this coaching journey um, number two is obviously not going to be as glamorous as the last one um, where we were setting up and playing against Liverpool and Manchester United. Um, but the good thing about this one is um, we will be able to show clips from training and we'll be able to show clips from games, um, hopefully to give you a little bit more of a well-rounded kind of um, look at what we do, um, as we're, uh, not just showing you kind of the session plans and the animations. We'll be able to show you um, real players doing it live, which I think will make a big difference. Um, and we couldn't do that before um, due to the um, club that we're working at and kind of their policies on um, the um, child protection um, kind of things around the internet. But anyway, let's get cracking into the project overview. So um, I'm out here in the USA. Um, I'm working at a club called Aggies FC, um, which is in northern Utah. Um, so it's about an hour and a half um, from Salt Lake for anyone who's familiar with, uh, with Utah um, in the north. Um, we are relatively a small club um, in terms of USA. Um, we've got about 650 players um, and they range from age groups of under 7 to under 18s. Um, and like I said, like um, in terms of the USA and the scale of some of the clubs, just to put this in context, um, there's clubs around uh, our area here and there's clubs in Salt Lake and um, elsewhere who have kind of double and even treble those amount of numbers. So um, in terms of the USA, um, we are relatively small. Um, I know some of you guys who um, subscribe to us in, in the UK and Europe will be like, wow, that's that's a lot of players and etc. But um, trust me, um, in this grand scale of things in the USA, that is that is a relatively small club. So in total, um, we've got about 54 teams. Um, and um, with that comes about 100 coaches as there is a head coach and an assistant coach for each team. Um, and effectively, I'm in a head of coaching role and I have been here since um, June 2022, which personally was a, a real huge move. Um, and obviously professionally as well, um, it's been um, a really interesting ride um, so far, um, but it's one that's been really enjoyable. Um, and my role kind of um, helps um, lots of, of coaches and players, obviously. Um, I don't actually have or coaching my own teams. Um, my job is solely um, to try and educate the coaches here. Um, and then in turn, obviously, hopefully they can help them um, educate um, the players as well. Um, and obviously, if you're working with um, 100 coaches um, who can affect 650 players, um, then that might be a little bit um, of a better kind of project than um, if I just had my own couple of teams and I was affecting 25 players kind of max. So, um, yeah, I'm here to help the coaches in, in whatever needs they can and um, try and help them. And just again, just to give you a little bit of context about um, sort of grassroots um, football or soccer, as I call it here in the USA. Um, obviously we're at a, we're at, we are at a grassroots level and um, they do take it quite seriously um, obviously like all the uh, players and their families pay to, to play um, uh, football over here 
Um, and one of the key things to remember in this as well is like that all of our coaches um, are actually volunteers and they're actually parents. So um, none of our coaches get paid. Um, I'm the only person um, in the, or I'm the only employee from the club. Actually, there's, there's two employees at the club that get paid. Um, there's myself, um, obviously in the head of coaching role, and then we have a um, like director of operations as well who um, she organises everything in terms of um, the pitches, the teams, um, all the squads, um, all the alignment that has to go on between uh, the club and the um, Utah um, State Youth Soccer. Um, so there's only, as I said, there's only two members of, of staff um, who are kind of on the payroll. Everyone else is volunteers. And again, just to put it into context, a lot of these coaches um, have never played the game. Um, they didn't play the game growing up. Um, they were into other uh, more popular American sports. Um, so they are completely like kind of, you know, a lot of them are very much kind of experiencing this for this first time. So I know a lot of you experienced coaches out there could imagine that that's quite a daunting task that, you know, they take on and they volunteer their time to to coach their kids effectively because their co their kid wants to play football. Um, so it's um, it's uh, I really admire a lot of our coaches for doing it. Um, I always use the example of like um, so us guys who have worked in football for a long time um all of a sudden if if our kid turned around and said like dad you know i want you to i want you to coach me at american football or basketball we'd be like okay wow my, i think my head would fall off so um so a lot of these coaches are doing an amazing job um so they have kind of need education just as much as the players do and kind of that's that's my role um and it has been since june 2022 but just going along as well is what i talked about earlier in terms of position specific and our brand new website this is what we put together um, so and this is what I'm delivering here in the USA so we've put together a full kind of club curriculum um, uh, which is available now on our website um, which is www.positionspecific.com um, and you can go on there and you can purchase uh, this and have all access to everything that we do and obviously we'll be updating that um, as much as possible um, over the coming months and years but effectively this is what we've put together so we've put together um, a coach and player pathway so for the coaches um, they have um, a foundation model um, which is I mean you know found I mean over here as well because of the kind of um, the level of the players in grassroots um, obviously the foundation model is really important for all age groups but specifically for those under sevens to around about under 12 so just before they go to 11 v 11 so we've put a full foundation model together um, for that um, with uh, videos and examples of everything from the pro game it's very individual based in terms of around um, the brilliant basics which I'll get onto a little bit when we talk about um, the sessions um, it's very much based around scenarios of the game. So, you know, 1v0, 1v1, 1v2, 2v1, 1v2, 2v2, all the way up to kind of um, 4v3. Um, and obviously into small sided games and transitional moments. Um, and like I said, it's very much kind of um, fun based and obviously getting the kids in lots of little small sided games and scenarios as much as possible um, around individual work. Um, we've then got two, model, uh, two models in the youth kind of phase or the youth section. So we've got a youth model in possession and we've got a youth model out of possession. Um, now those two um, parts um, rely heavily on our uh, individual performance wheels, which I'm sure lots of you guys have seen before. So in possession, we have scan, move, receive, release. And then out of possession, we have scan, move, dictate, defend. Um, and that's really delves deep into um, kind of working around those actions and helping the kids improve those actions as much as possible in those ages. And then obviously that all feeds into our full game model, um, which I'll talk about a lot in this um, presentation um, as we get into the sessions and the team that I'm working with. Um, but that's um, around four, the four phases of the game that we find really important. Um, and it just helps the coaches kind of, um, it's a bit of a step by, the whole curriculum is a bit of a step by step guide for coaches who um, are either um, non-experienced and have never coached before and are completely brand new with the team, um, all the way to the ones that um, are kind of what we would call um, elite level here in terms of the level in terms of the levels and the standard um, but on, obviously like you know in terms of um, the website then this is all available and again it's there for coaches who don't know much at all and are completely brand new or even if you're working in the professional game um, at professional clubs and um, well, obviously with going back to the coaching journey one this is what we were using and this is what we were kind of delivering in those in those clubs as well we've also developed this in a player pathway as well so the idea is that um, all the coaches at the club um, kind of go, can go on the website they can use this they can dive into it they can dig into it they can use the practices etc I want to stress that it is not just random practices there's a there's a full structure to this there's a full kind of step-by-step -step guide to doing this um, 
Um, we didn't want to be one of those companies that put out random sessions here or there and everywhere. Um, we wanted to make sure that it was um, obviously relative to the kids' age and stage of development. Um, and we wanted to make sure that coaches could follow it um, no matter what the level. Um, so coaches can do that. They can deliver those kind of practices. Um, we've also got a players section of the website where players can then go and work on these things uh, on their own away from practice. So whatever the coach delivers, the players can then go away and work on it themselves. And that's a big thing that I found here in the USA is that like a lot of the kids uh, here, obviously there's no not really much of a football culture. So kids tend not to know much about the professional game. They don't really watch the professional game. Um, so in turn as well, um, you know, they don't really practice away from training sessions. Um, so we've set up a kind of a, a section on the website where now they can. Um, so they can go and they can watch the videos um, that the coaches watch um, around all the different scenarios, um, around all the actions in the performance wheels and all the uh, game model um, phases. And then they can go and work on the fundamentals within the foundation model and those youth models as well. So um, this has been brilliant. It's been really beneficial for us um, in terms of this club here. Um, we've seen some massive strides. Um, in terms of the club and the player development and the coach development, more importantly, um, from using this at the club. Um, and obviously that leads nicely into kind of the team that I'm going to be working with in this coaching journey. So just to give you a little bit of um, insight into um, the team that I'm going to be working with during this coaching journey and kind of give you an example of the scale of um, how long um, I've been working with them and how long I'll be working with them kind of through this journey. So um, this is um, Aggies FC zero, uh, uh, 2009 um, blue team. So they are under 15. Um, they play in Premier One level over here, which is the kind of the top state level. Um, so you can't get any higher than, than Premier uh, One. So that's the level they play in. Um, they've had real good success um, since they've um, kind of formed together. Um, majority of the boys have been together since under sevens and under eights. Um, with obviously a couple of changes along the way, uh, with new players being added um, a couple of times around um, under 11s and 12s, and then a couple of players who have recently been added um, before the um, under 14s season, um, which I'll get into in a second. But like I said, they've been really well coached um, up until the point that I started helping out coaching with them. Uh, and I want to stress that again, I'm not the head coach and um, this is not my team. Um, I am just assisting the head coach and the assistant coach to one, hopefully make th them better coaches um, and then for them to hopefully um, pass that down to the boys as well. Um, and um, the, the, the two coaches that I'm working with have been absolutely brilliant. Um, like they've really um, kind of bought into what we're doing. Um, they've really bought into the whole curriculum um, and especially the game model side of things as well um, with the boys at this age. Um, and, and what we'll do is as we get further on in the coaching journey is we'll get some interviews going with those guys as well and just let them kind of explain um, some of the differences they've they've kind of noticed in their own coaching pathways and obviously in, in coaching the boys as well. But they've done an amazing job up until the point where I started working with them. Um, and how I work with them as well is like I think it's important to point out as well is like that um, it's because obviously I don't, we, do, we don't want to take full credit for kind of their success um, is that they will do usually probably two sessions a week um, and then obviously there'll be, a, there'll be a game in the league as well. Um, and that kind of works is like they'll have a session with the head coach and the assistant coach um, for one of the sessions and then I will do a session with the assistant head, uh, assistant coach and the head coach um, as well during the week and then they'll obviously have their game as well and I try to get to as many games as possible with those guys as well but as I said I just want to dive into some of the success that they've had um, prior to me working with them um, and prior to and then obviously post um, and obviously currently uh, while working with them as well so um, in spring 2020 they were state cup winners um, so under 12 so the last year of 9v9 um, they uh, amazing achievement they managed to be um, state cup um, winners which is uh, again, I want to reiterate for where we are in kind of Utah and the Valley, that's an amazing achievement. Um, they um, they were the first boys team uh, here in uh, our area to win State Cup, um, which is you know, obviously never gone before. So a bit of a history made there, which was which was unbelievable. Um, what they uh, obviously went on to do from there on was um, they uh, had a, a good kind of fall uh, season in um, 2020. Um, as well and then a good spring season in 2021 um, where they finished um, fourth and third in Premier One um, and finished um, we got to the semi-finals of State Cup um, in those particular years and then obviously like, like I mentioned before I joined this club in June 2022 um, and I'd worked with them a little bit before and I'd worked with the head coach a little bit before over kind of 
uh, Zoom calls and stuff like that. But um, obviously when I got here in June, I really started to um, work with the coaches and work with the team a lot more. Um, and it's been a brilliant experience. And um, I mean, obviously the, the experience helps when you have a little bit a little bit of success as well. So in fall 2022, um, we, uh, it's uh, under 14s level. Um, they placed third in Premier One um, and they got to the State Cup final. Unfortunately, got beat by a very good uh, team. Um, and then they play in something as well called Desert Conference, which is um, kind of um, two or three of the best teams in the state can go can go and play in these like these regional tournaments um, and they'll play against teams from other states. Um, so it's um, so they did really well in that as well. Um, when we went into the spring 2023 uh, season, so still under 14s at this point, um, they placed third again in Premier One, um, which was a little bit disappointing for us because, like, after placing third the um, the kind of the season before, um, we were hoping for a little bit of a better finish, um, and unfortunately, we slipped into third place. I think in the last lap on the last game of the season, so. Um, even though we we felt like we did progress in terms of like um, looking at uh, results and obviously them at, at this level um, and the age of the boys now um, and looking at the the lead tables and stuff that was a slight disappointment slip into third but uh, again I want to stress that obviously like it's not all about um, results and where you place and stuff but sometimes um, when you're seeing um, kind of progress from um, on the training pitch um, into games and and things like that you obviously want to see that those performances um, kind of turn into results as well. Um, so from there, um, we went into the fall. We had the um, we had the summer um, to kind of keep working um, and keep kind of push forward with the boys. Um, when we went into the fall 2023 uh, season, um, obviously the boys turned U15 from this point because it's from September. Um, they managed to win uh, Premier One, which was an amazing achievement. Um, they actually went unbeaten um, in the league, which was fantastic. Um, they drew one game, I think, and they won all the rest of the games, which was an amazing achievement. Um, they managed to win the State Cup. Um, so again, a little bit of history made um, in terms of uh, the area that we're in. Um, they became... Last time they became the first boys team to win State Cup. Um, this time they became the first boys team at 11 v 11 uh, to win State Cup, which was uh, which was unbelievable. Um, and they um, finished second in the Utah Platform League. Now this league was a, a group of um, the best teams in uh, the state because um, some teams don't play uh, in Premier One. Um, they'll go and play in other leagues um, deemed more higher leagues, etc. Um, so um, the, the Utah U Soccer Association formed the Utah uh, Platform League, um, which put all those teams kind of together um, and obviously allowed us to compete in that, which was brilliant for us because um, it just meant lots more games um, against really good um, opposition. Um, and one of the things over here is like, um, I believe that the kids don't play enough games. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll mention at the end of this about how short some of the seasons are. Um, but to have that Utah Platform League um, was brilliant for us. And then obviously to finish second, again, last game of the season, we ended up losing the game 3-2, which put us in second, which was um, disappointing. And we probably felt like we should have won the game. Um, but obviously, like, um, you know what the game's like, and so sometimes it's it's not as nice to you. But since turning under 15, so since the spring season in 2023, um, so going from under 14s to um, obviously under 15s uh, through the summer um, the, the boys actually managed to win 28 consecutive uh, consecutive games which is amazing like you know like it's like I mentioned before going through the league season and drawing one game and winning the rest is a really good achievement then obviously going on and winning um, state cup um, and finishing second in but to win 28 consecutive games which included a couple of tournaments in the summer as well um, is, a, is a really really good achievement it kind of shows what, how far the boys have come in terms of their development which was which has been amazing as well um, so now this leads on nicely to to kind of why we're doing this coaching journey because um, because the boys won state cup um, they now get to uh, participate in far west regional tournament um, which uh, this particular year is in Hawaii. Um, so as you can imagine, all the parents were absolutely buzzing about that because they all get to tri trip to Hawaii now and a, a vacation. So um, so that's going to be really good for the boys. Um, and that's in the at the end of June in 2024. So what we're going to do kind of with this coaching journey is we're going to show you the journey that they're going to go on from this point forward um, with a couple of little bumps in the road, um, as I'll mention as we go. Um, but that it's going to lead into that tournament. And then obviously we're going to see how we're going to do at that tournament. So um, hopefully this coaching journey will be um, a really good kind of journey to show um, and show the, um, how much the, the boys are kind of developing and, and doing really well going into that tournament. Um, one thing I, I want to mention, and I mentioned it previously before about um, the kind of uh, the games and the seasons over here. 
Um, obviously, like uh, I, I should have mentioned it right at the start, but I didn't. But anyway, so what happens is um, they have a spring and a fall season here, um, and that's mainly due to um, the weather. But like this happens pretty much all over the USA. So what happens is. Um, because of the weather here um, in the winter is like starting January in the winter is really kind of cold and snowy so they have an indoors kind of uh, season where they just practice and play 7v7 um, once the kind of uh, we move into the spring uh, spring kind of uh, months they'll have a spring season um, which leads into May um, which is then they'll have like a, a tryout kind of thing um, for the club um, which is at the end of May then they'll have the summer kind of uh, months which is obviously really hot especially where we are um, so um, there's no season kind of during the summer and then kind of towards the middle or end of August they'll have their fall season or autumn season for you guys that are in uh, the UK and Europe um, and that'll go into um, kind of the middle of October depending on how successful you are um, maybe towards the end of October and then November through to spring is, is the winter and where they'll go and back in and train indoors so like I said um, it's it's very short seasons it's not like we used to back in Europe where you kind of have a 10 month season um, it's very short kind of two three month seasons um, especially the spring season because of when the bad weather finishes um, to when we're able to get on the pitches and stuff it sometimes it can end like in the last two years it's ended up being a real short season um, and moving uh, obviously moving into summer and then the four seasons a little bit more spread out but like I said before like I personally don't think the kids play enough games here um, so that's why for us it's really important to participate in the Utah Platform League or even the Desert Conference and obviously then in tournaments and stuff as well um, and I think one of the reasons for that is obviously that some of the distances that they travel um, is, is quite significant as well so that kind of uh, uh, make, makes a, a fair point of that. Okay, so let's get into um, the team plan um, for the next um, kind of couple of months leading into um, that end of June uh, regional tournament in Hawaii. So what happens here as well is like because the boys are now under 15s, um, that means that they are in their kind of first year at high school so that all the boys have started high school. Um, and for anyone who's really familiar with the USA, the high school um, kind of sports is a major kind of thing, especially in a small community where we are. Um, it's a really kind of significant kind of thing that all the kids and parents want want to do. Um, so um, because they take high school so seriously, um, that usually um, kind of starts from March and moves into all the way into May. Again, depending how successful your high school is, because um, they have a state cup tournament as well. So what that means is like there is for the under 15 boys and up, um, there is no kind of club play. Um, or a club season during this time um, and the boys can't actually play any games with their club teams during this season um, but what you can do um, is you can um, put in a request for uh, special circumstances and then allow um, the boys to be able to train with their club team under these special circumstances and obviously our special circumstances it is that we're going to uh, these far west regional tournament in Hawaii so um, effectively um, we were able to um, kind of put that um, that form in and be able to get the boys for two uh, for five training sessions uh, from the 16th of March to the 11th of May so every couple of weeks we managed to get the boys um, together um, and into some training sessions and that's really important because when they go to um, high school um, they'll split off into we've got like 15 boys and they'll split off into um, four or five different high schools um, depending on where they live and um, that can be um, lots of kind of different coaching. Um, it can lo it can be lots of different systems of play. It can be lots of different styles of play, etc., etc. Um, so to get the boys back every two weeks and together um, for these five training sessions um, has been really good. It's kept them kind of uh, engaged with our system. Um, it's kept them obviously engaged with us as coaches um, and getting them together and keeping them engaged and socially um, with each other as well, which has been really important. So what's going to happen after those five uh, sessions um, is um, the week, hopefully commencing Monday the 20th um, to until June the 19th, um, we're going to go to three training sessions a week. Um, and then we're going to have, um, well, probably about three or four um, friendly matches um, before June the 20th is when we'll go to Far West Regionals in Hawaii. And um, that's a week-long tournament um, up until June the 27th. And Far West Regionals basically means um, that the State Cup winners from uh, Utah, from Southern California, um, from Nevada, um, from Arizona, um, I think um, is the kind of the states that um, are going to be there. So don't hold me on that. Um, my geography is not, not the best. 
um, but that's kind of how it how it's going to work. Um, so for the first five training sessions, um, there's going to be no kind of game footage or kind of um, game um, plans kind of to show you guys. Um, we'll obviously get into that when we get the boys back um, to the three training sessions a week, and obviously we get some games going as well. But obviously that was because of the high school and they couldn't play games during this time. So what we're going to do is, um, so we're going to run through obviously the the training sessions um, that we've done over the last um, like couple of months um, and we'll probably do a couple of training sessions together um, in uh, one of the coaching journeys over the next few weeks and that'll just catch us up uh, in terms of before going to three sessions a week so but that's the that's the plan um, for the next few weeks um, so um, we'll look forward to having you on our journey okay so let's get into um, what we're going to cover over the next uh, five sessions um, and how that's going to look um, in terms of what we'll be covering with the boys as well um, but just as we're getting into that, I just wanted to let you know about, obviously, this is our game model, and I know a lot of you guys will have seen this before, and you've heard us talk about this before, um, but we've based our game model um, around four phases of the game, so um, we've got attacking organisation, we've got um, defensive transition, and we've got defensive organisation, and then we've got attacking uh, transition, and it kind of all flows um, into um, those four phases and flows into each other and the idea is that effectively our style of play or our philosophy or whatever you want to call it um, is to control the opposition in all of these four phases of the game whether we're attacking um, or whether we're defending um, and one one of the things about our game model and one of the things that I think is really unique to us at position specific is um, that we have uh, language for everything that we talk about so whether we talk about an individual um, and individual development or where we're talking about game model and team development we have language for everything so um, each of our uh, four phases here has a language um, and then each of our four phases um, has a target as well in terms of what we're trying to achieve um, within that phase within the game so give you a couple of examples here so looking at a talk uh, attacking organization um, our language is shape support and supply um, so again as a coach if your team's in attacking organization so you've got um, good control of the ball um, whether that's starting from a uh, restart like a goal kicker or a throw in um, or whether you've just got control of the ball um, it, within your overload um, on your defensive line um, then the first thing you're looking at is your shape are you in a good shape to be able to attack the opposition um, uh, and what's that shape look like um, after that we're looking at support so how players create angles and movements um, for the player on the ball um, and then we're looking at supply so whether that supply is playing through the opposition around the opposition or over the opposition um, so again like if you're a coach there coaching in a game then um, if your team's struggling in attacking organization then you know it's probably to do with one of those three things um, and if they're doing really well like uh, attacking organization you're just looking at different ways where you can exploit the opposition um, when they're defending so attacking organization split into two so we've got playing out um, which is getting from um, our goalkeeper or um, our defensive half uh, into the attacking half and we look to do that 50% of the time that we have the ball um, and then once we get into the opposition's half uh, we look to play in um, so that's progress into the penalty area and obviously create chances on goal um, and we look to do that 30% of the times that we have the ball in the opposition positions uh, half as well um, and again all of the phases have got their own um, uh, language and they've got their own targets as you can see there um, I won't go through I won't go through them all um, but um, we found that those types of things um, especially for coaches learning um, having that language has been really really important um, and it just helps them kind of um, it's it helps them remember kind of the phases um, and it helps them remember kind of what parts of the phases and what moments of the phases that they might be in um, and what they need to do in each phase as well so they can help the players um, on, on the pitch as well. Um, and obviously having the same letter um, for each word um, really helps in terms of that memory as well. Um, one of the good things about having the targets as well is, um, or one of the main things about having the targets as well is um, that uh, when you analyse your game, um, so if you're lucky enough, which we are with these boys where um, we've got a VO camera where we can record the games, um, when the coaches are analysing the games afterwards, um, then those targets are something that they can uh, look to hit um, and they can do their analysis around those targets in each phase um, and that's been really good because that helps us then that shapes your kind of your training week and kind of what your performance problems are um, and what you need to be and what you need to work on so that's been, that's been really important for a lot of the coaches that I'm working with here to be able to to be able to break it down like that and to be able to see it like that and then obviously that kind of shapes 
um, what they're looking into. And sometimes when you just go off your game and your coach's eye during the game, um, it's hard to kind of get a good feel of, of what you need to be working on and what your performance problems are. So to be able to watch the game back and then analyze it around these these targets is has been brilliant. Um, and that's, a, that's something that I employ all coaches to do if, if it's possible. I know obviously it's not possible in lots of places, but um, but that's really like a one a really important thing I would I would stress to the coaches as well. So what we're going to do over the next five weeks um, is we're going to touch on each of these moments um, within the game model. Um, and some of it might change because the weather at this time of year is really unpredictable. Um, it's really difficult. to. Um, sometimes it's it's beautiful sunshine. Sometimes it's really heavy rain and wind and all the rest of it. So sessions might change. Um, but a lot of the time we're going to be sticking to one of these four phases um, or something within these four phases to work on with the boys. Now, that's obviously the team element of it as well. Um, what I've found since I've been here in the US is, um, and again, it relates a little bit back to that football culture, but um, a lot of the players that I work with here um, are very much technically behind what a lot of players in, in Europe and especially the levels that I've kind of worked at in England. So we I've put a massive emphasis on um, coaching individuals and developing individuals and that's a huge part of what I've kind of put into the club. And I say to coaches all the time that, um, you know, it's really important that we develop individuals because, um, you, know, you know, your teams will improve just on that alone. And then if you can add, obviously, the game model stuff to it and, and the team coaching element to it, then then we're onto a, a good pathway. But um, what you'll find in a lot of these pr- uh, sessions that I'm going to show you, um, a lot of the practices within the sessions um, are going to be around in, uh, the individual um, and improving those individual um, actions. Um, and I'll explain that as we go along. Uh, anyway, and I'll also explain how those the, how that individual actions that we're working on um, in the particular session relates to um, the part of the game that we're going to be talking about uh, anyway. But let's move on uh, into session one, um, and the session one um, is going to have a bit of a focus on defensive transition, uh, or more of a focus on defensive transition, um, should I say? Because I, I feel as though when you work the transition moments, um, you work both parts of it anyway, so you'll work. Um, you, you might have a focus on defensive transition, but naturally attacking transition will come into it anyway, and obviously the other way around as well. Um, so, but that's going to be the main focus of session one, um, and we'll we'll get into that um, and dive into a little bit deeper. So, this is kind of what we go after in terms of defensive transition. Um, so, we've got three R's in terms of defensive transition. So, we've got react, uh, recover, and regroup. Um, when we're in defensive transition, so defensive transition is triggered when we lose possession of the ball anywhere on the pitch. That can be in the opposition's half, can be in your own half, um, it can be absolutely anywhere. Um, what is our objective when that happens? Our objective is, is to win the ball or force the opposition to mistake within three passes after losing possession anywhere on the pitch. So um, obviously like defensive transition for the kind of, in, in terms of dominating all the moments of the game, for us defensive transition is really important, especially when we're actually in possession and we're attacking. Um, because we want to be able to sustain attacks, especially in the opposition's half. So that defensive transition of reacting um, and putting pressure on the ball and stepping towards the ball um, in those moments um, for us as a team um, is really, really important. Um, and then obviously, what's our target? 80% of uh, uh, the target is regaining that um, possession within those three passes. Okay, so looking at those three R's, um, obviously, first off, we have React. So that's applying pressure quickly on and around the board to force the opposition into mistakes. Like I mentioned before, if we're trying to sustain attacks in the opposition's half and the ball turns over, we want to react real quickly, put pressure on the ball and see if we can win it back to continue attacking. Um, Obviously, sometimes that doesn't work. Um, So if it doesn't work, um, obviously, we have to recover. So that means then about looking and finding your mark. So each player on the pitch... Um, has obviously got a opposition player to play up against, um, which we call a mark. Um, so we want to stop them um, from being able to effectively uh, the game um, and recovery runs um, and be goal side and obviously inside the pitch. So being obviously really compact uh, inside the pitch, forcing the play around, um, but obviously recovering into a position of, um, of compact state and obviously recovering into a position where you can see the ball and you can see your mark. Um, after that, we go to uh, regroup as well, which is uh, reorganising um, when to possibly change the mark so really important when we talk to players about um, obviously their mark that they're playing against or that opposition player they're playing against that is their responsibility but it's not just their responsibility you know if someone gets beat 1v1 um, or if something happens then you know they might have to change their mark and they might have to go and put pressure on someone else um, but ultimately like it's to prevent the opposition from um, progressing the, uh, with the ball um, especially into our defending half and obviously effectively into our box as well. Um, so um, but it's really like interesting these moments of the game, these transition moments of the game, which I feel as though like lots of um, coaches and teams don't have enough of an emphasis on these moments. 
um, and um, we're actually going to do some really interesting stat stuff um, around the top teams um, and these uh, transitional moments um, in the next uh, week or so um, on, on YouTube, on our channel here. Um, and um, I think you'll find that's, that's really interesting um, because we feel as though that if you, if you really control the transitional moments of the game, then you'll pretty much control the whole game. Um, and that's really important, especially in the kind of style that we want to play um, around our game model. So um, let's get into the practices that um, occurred in session number one. And then what you'll see here is you'll see the colours jumping around a little bit. Um, so obviously we've got this blue colour here for the first practice uh, in defensive transition. Um, and But it's effectively because these first couple of practices, um, um, I've actually taken these from our foundation model. Um, and I go back to what I said right at the start is um, that I, f I always feel, especially kids in the USA, um, that we need to constantly kind of beat that drum around um, sort of technical skills and technical actions, um, and um, especially over here. Um, but I've you know I've worked at, at top Premier League um, clubs, academies, um, and it's the same there as well. Keep ticking those players over on the technical actions that occur in the game, um, and for us, um, these technical actions that occur constantly in the game. So the first practice that we did with the boys um, was a technical practice um, and it was around um, kind of our position specific and um, brilliant basics. Um, and what this is, is um, our brilliant basics are effectively 32 actions. Um, so, well, 16 skills um, and obviously working them on your right foot, working them on the left foot turns that into 32 actions overall. Um, but those actions depend on the type of pressure that the player is uh, in a 1v1. So, for example, we've got 12 actions for, uh, for players who are in 1v1 take-ons when the pressure's in front um, or on the side. Uh, we've got 1v1 changing direction actions. Um, so, obviously, like the defenders in terms of pressure can be front, side or back. Um, changing directions, obviously, in lots of different directions. Um, and then we've got 1v1 take-ons with side and back pressure. We've got 12 actions within that as well. Um, so these effectively, like we got asked the question all the time. Well, I got asked the question all the time when I was talking about brilliant basics, and people were like, well, what is the brilliant basics? So we effectively we just put all these these skills together, um, and obviously it turns into um, a 32 number of actions just because of working them on the right and left foot. Um, so the focus of this technical practice is going to be on 1v1 changing direction um, with front side and back pressure, um, and this is what the practice looks like. So. A really simple guys like really straightforward um, so a smaller um, kind of area here in terms of um, a little bit of a, a rectangle so we went for 24 um, kind of length um, and a 12 uh, yards kind of width and um, we had three four players um, in kind of each each line um, and then we were just going to work through um, those um, eight kind of skills that you see there um, so there's four turns to change direction there um, and obviously working them on the left and the right foot um, turns that into eight. But dead simple players are just really going to dribble the ball um, up to the end line. They're going to perform one of the, the skills um, and then dribble back. And when they get back, obviously the next player goes. So really straightforward. Um, just asking the players um, a couple of like specific things in terms of how they're pushing the ball forward. Uh, in terms of using the laces of the feet um, keeping the ball under control. Um, and then obviously pushing it forward again and then obviously getting to the end line and providing that or uh, executing that turn uh, to come back. So um, our eight kind of uh, skills around this are we have an outside hook, um, which is using the outside of the feet to just hook the ball back um, and change direction. We have the inside hook, which is obviously the same thing, just using the insides of the feet to hook it back. We have an outside drag back. So I talk about this as well, like having the ball on the outside of the body um, and dragging the, back, uh, dragging the ball back with the sole of the feet. Um, and turning the same way as the ball, not taking, not turning your cries of the ball, not turning your back on the ball. And um, there's a habit here of players stopping the ball um, and spinning round the opposite way to the ball and taking the rise off it. So this is dragging the ball back um, down the outside of the body and turning with the ball. Um, so obviously your body's in between the ball and the defender when you're under pressure at all times. And then we have an inside drag back, which is the opposite to that. So just dragging the ball back towards the inside um, of the uh, inside of the body and back towards your standing foot and then obviously moving it out of the way when you get there as well. So what we did was um, we worked this kind of little practice for um, about three or four, about uh, probably about five or six minutes. Um, and we just did a, uh, well, a bit longer than that, actually, probably about eight to ten minutes. Um, and we just did a couple of minutes on um, each turn. Um, and I just asked the boys to alternate which foot they use every time they go. Um, so if they went first time with the right foot, um, then they'd, they'd go next time with the left foot. Um, and this is effectively what it looked like and what it looks like when the boys were doing it as well. So I won't go through all the turns. I'll just go through a couple of them. Um, but 
you'll get the kind of understanding of what's going on here. As, as you can see, the boys are dribbling out. They'll use one foot all the way. They'll get to the end line, and then they'll just spin um, with the outside of the foot because this is the outside hook one. Um, so they'll just spin back um, and use uh, the outside of the foot to come back. Um, the second one was just, um, that I'll show you here, is just the inside drag back. So just dragging the ball back to the towards the inside of the body and the standing foot with the sole of the foot. Um, and obviously just turning and, and coming back to the group. Now, one of the reasons that I was doing this practice um, was obviously to work those brilliant basics with the players. Um, but the other side of it as well is like that I feel as though in defensive transition moments when the ball's turned over and then you go and put pressure on the opposition straight away, you'll get these moments where players have to secure the ball um, usually um, with um, some sort of with, with with a part of the foot, whether that's the outside or the inside of the soles of the feet, um, and a lot of the times they have to kind of dribble into um, or change direction and get into space um, to obviously find a pass um, to a free player um, to obviously keep that keep that possession going or keep that attack um, going as I mentioned before so um, yes you can have defensive transition moments where you win the ball back and you pass it straight away or it, the ball's rolling towards you and you, you, you play a first time pass absolutely fine but I feel I feel as though in my experience the majority of time that you'll see players in these defensive transitional moments is in um, kind of these little like dribbling moments where they've got to change direction wriggle out of pressure um, and, and find their way into space to, to make a pass. So what we did from there is we took that um, technical practice into a skill practice. And again, guys, really, really straightforward skill practice. So as you can see here from the pictures, this is this is a 1v1 skill practice. Um, and all the players are going to do here is like, so two players line up either side of the cone in one of the corners of the pitch. Um, there's two goals to score in. Um, the, player, the next player in line just plays the ball into the middle of the square. Um, and the two players kind of run and get on uh, and get onto the ball, um, and then obviously they can score in either, either of the goals. Um, and as you can see, where the goals are positioned, um, that just uh, gives players opportunities to practice lots of changes direction because they'll as soon as they get to the ball, they've got to change direction to go to a goal. If they get put under pressure quickly, um, uh, going towards that goal, they might have to change direction and go to the other one as well. Um, in this kind of little video that you're going to see here, this animation video here, um, you'll see that um, there's actually real goals where in the practice that I'm about to show you, we actually use, I, I use gates instead of goals uh, for the players to, to sprint through with the ball. Um, I'll mix it up. Sometimes I'll use goals like, in, like it shows in the practice here, but in other times I'll use gates as well because sometimes I just feel that gates are a good opportunity for players to kind of um, build up to, to top speed or close to stop top speed and, and drive through a gate uh, rather than slowing down to execute a pass into a goal um, and like I said before like in any any 1v1 situation as soon as you get like half a yard or a yard away from the defender obviously the acceleration and, and the change of speed to get away becomes really important as well um, so we did this in two parts as well so and I'll show you both parts so part one was where the defender uh, you decide which is the attacker and the defender and the defender lets the attacker have their first touch and then they engage um, and then part two was where it's a 50-50 um, and the ball just gets rolled out there and whoever gets there first is, is the attacker, whoever gets there second is the defender. Obviously, if the defender wins it, they can go and score either, either goal as well. So it's just real good like opportunities for um, one, uh, like a bit of a 50-50, a bit of a wrestle to get, get to the ball um, and then obviously change direction and find the way into that space. Um, and like I keep talking about the tr defensive transition moment, so... The, the ball might have run away from someone in possession, uh, they might chase after it, get hold of it, and then they've got to find their way into space um, through ch um, changing direction and dribbling, and um, obviously to find that pass to the teammate. So um, we actually went for a medium sized area on this, so it's, um, it's a square of 20 by 20. Um, the gate goals are probably about two to three yards wide each, um, and we had four to six players in each area. Um, and we just make we let the players play eight to ten games per player, um, which took about eight, eight to twelve minutes. But again, it's you know not a lot of time, um, but just um, gives them uh, an opportunity to practice those changing of direction um, skills that we've just worked on in the technical practice under a little bit more pressure of a one v one. So this is what it looked like um, with the with the boys doing it. Um, I know this these videos can be a little bit difficult because of uh, there's the, obviously there's two practices side by side, um, and obviously there's a lot going on. Um, but obviously we had we had 15 here on the day, um, and um, it was just a good opportunity for for players to get plenty of goes if we split them into groups of six and seven. So as you can see here, so this first one is where like they'll decide who's the attacker and the defender. Um, and they'll let them get to the ball first and then they'll change uh, and then obviously the defender will, will engage. You can see this one going here where gets the ball first, a couple of change of direction. In that particular case, that he's, he's, got, he's managed to get face on with the defender and take him on that way. Um, but just again, like plenty of opportunities to use those skills we, we got in the uh, technical practice. So this one's a little bit more of a 
50-50 now. So the ball just gets rolled out. The players effectively race to the ball. Whoever gets there first is the attacker. Um, so you just get those moments now where, like you'd get in a game where like the ball kind of, from being in possession, maybe runs away from someone or bounces off someone or a pass is misstrayed and then two players kind of compete in 50-50 to get to it. Um, and then, as you can see here from the one on the right, um, where he's just twisting and turning, changing direction, doesn't quite get away that time. Um, but again, it's just plenty of opportunities for the players to, like the one on the left here. So plenty of opportunities here. Look, lots of twisting and turning, outsides, insides of the feet, soles of the feet, maybe able to get into that space and then drive away and get through get through the gate, just like you would do uh, in a defensive transitional uh, moment. So after those two practices, um, we just moved into a couple of skill practices um, to really focus now dr and drill down on the defensive transition. Um, so these two sessions are effectively all about the react part um, to, to defensive transition. So remember we had react, uh, recover and regroup. Well, we're just going to work on um, and talk about the, the react moments um, and in this first session. So this first session, again, real real straightforward. Um, so what we've got here is we've got a little bit of a positional game. So we had 15 players there on the day. Um, so we had three teams of five. Um, so two teams are going to be in areas to keep possession, and then one team will be the defending team. Um, so as you can see from the picture there, um, so the white team in possession of the ball, um, and the red team are defending. So the white players um, are going to position themselves, as you can see on the screen there, with one on each side of the square and one in the middle. Um, in terms of the positioning um, and then there'll be three kind of defenders going in to put them under pressure um, with the remaining two players kind of in that middle zone um, looking to block um, any any kind of forward passes which I'll get onto in a second and obviously then the yellows are set up exactly the same in the other half of the pitch so what how we played this particular game was um, that we had a minimum of, of four passes um, and then you can look to transfer the ball through the middle zone into the opposite opposition team so for example the whites here they're just going to try and get three or four passes uh, or four passes minimum and um, they don't have to go on four or five they can keep it for a little bit longer and go on the times right and we kind of left that decision up to them um, but then they can obviously look to play into the yellows. Um, and then once the ball goes into the yellows, then two of the reds um, will, uh, and three of the reds, sorry, will go and defend, as you can see now, in that opposition, uh, opposition box. And then the remaining two come back into that middle zone and the practice just continues. So there's a couple of different ways you can play this um, in terms of um, how the turnovers work. Um, but what we kind of did was um, we said that um, the uh, we, we play kind of normal football rules. So, for example, as you can see in the picture there, so if the white teams are in possession, if they if a pass goes astray or if they dribble out of the area, then we would turn the ball over um, to the red team. Um, and then the yellows who were defending would become the attacking team and the whites who keep the ball out of play would become the defending team and we had changes at changeovers like that we also had it if the if the defending team won the ball then they had to play in they had to play either straight into the opposition uh, team so like here for example if the yellows won that ball uh, or got in possession of the ball they would play into um, the red team um, or they could play into their two players in the middle uh, and play into the red team um, and then um, if the ball went out off the yellows we'd give another ball back into the white team um, I actually played it as if so. I, I, I you'll see in the video that's coming up. Um, I was stood in the middle with a with a, um, a pile of balls, and if the ball went out off the white team, for example, here in this picture, I would play a ball into the reds, and the teams would transfer. Um, in hindsight and reflection of the session, a, a better thing to do with kids at this age would probably have been um, to play a ball into the yellows back in that same area and let them play into the um, their teammates or play into the reds just to. Again, to have to have that transitional moment from defending to to attacking, um, but um, but you, as you see, you, you can play it how we've played it here, or you can play it um, any other ways. Now, I personally, as a coach, I love these positional games. I think they're brilliant. Um, I think you can literally touch on all four phases of the game um, in these positional games. So, for example, um, and you'll see it a little bit in the video um, uh, when when we get to that in a second. But as you can see, like we'll set the you know, the team in possession, we'll set the players up in a shape. Um, and talk about the movements and the support in the shape, which obviously affects um, into your attacking organisation. Um, we'll, our main focus is obviously defensive transition, and I'll show you a couple of examples in a minute and what we're looking for. But effectively what we were looking for was, again, looking at that picture there, if the whites give the ball away to the yellows, 
Um, can they react quickly and win it back um, and then continue to keep possession? So they might all engage towards the ball or they might all step towards the ball. That's what we want. And then if they can get it, can they get back in the shape and then continue to continue to keep it? Um, whenever you work in defensive transition, it's always best to kind of start the team that you want to work the defensive transition, work um, start them in possession so then they have to react when they give it away. Um and um, again, so uh, and, and then obviously you can get the uh, defensive organisation moments. So the three defending players and working together to try and force the ball wide and not allow it to go through, and then obviously not allow that through pass um, after the four passes. So you get that organisational moment, and then obviously like if if the uh, yellows uh, win possession, um, obviously they they go into attacking transition, so they have to play into the. A two yellows in the middle or through to the reds uh, and then again obviously if the uh, white team give the ball away but win it back immediately then obviously they get back they have that attacking transition moment and then back into attacking organization so the, I, I just think that these games are absolutely brilliant for um, working on all all the moments of the game especially the transitional moments which you'll see in, in the video clips that I'm going to show you here as well so area size wise we went for um, a area of uh, 44 uh, kind of long um, um, and 20 by uh, width um, so that 44 is obviously like it's 20 um, kind of up until the the middle zone uh, there's four yards for the middle zone and then obviously a 20 on the other side of it as well like I mentioned before we had 15 players so we played the game as a, a 5v3 um, plus obviously five and then obviously the three's got two other members of their team as well um, and we played two or three games of four minutes which it approximately lasted 12 to 15 minutes but um, again, we're just talking to those players about that moment of like having the ball, losing it. Can you win it back? Can you react and win it back quickly and then get back into your attacking organization? So a couple of um, the, the three clips I'm going to show you. So I'm going to show you the setup um, of the session um, and you'll kind of uh, see it in motion here. So part one, obviously, of this video is the setup. So you'll see here that the greens are keeping possession against the three reds. Um, and obviously um, they're looking to uh, and the transitional moment there where the Reds win it and they transfer it and then the, it goes into the greens um, at that end and obviously they try and keep possession they're going to try and work those four passes which I think they get to here um, oh in fact it's, it's broken down there so as you can see it's broken down there so then I play a ball into the Reds and then the greens transfer into, into that into that area to obviously keep possession again tr turns over that, that time went off the greens so the Reds keep possession just like normal football game um, and obviously like the Reds are looking to keep the ball here I think they get the three passes here and manage to transfer it which is what we're looking for anyway uh, as you can see there good turn on the half turn then plays through to the yellows and then obviously the game transfers um, and, and we continue to play that way as well so lots of different ways you can play it but that's the way we did so what we're looking for here is and I'll just freeze it on these moments here is we're looking at the red team in possession here um, obviously playing through to the to the yellows so the yellows keep in possession and just looking for these moments here now where I'll just pause it there where the greens have won possession but if you can see the reaction of the yellows or the three immediate yellows around um, so they've gone from in possession to into that tran um, defensive transition and now we're in that react moment so and they do a really good job here of getting like reacting quickly getting hold of it might be a little bit of a foul in there but never mind and again now so see how we used a little bit of one of the turns we talked about to protect the ball and that dribbling moment and then obviously they get back into the shape and they're able to keep it and obviously play a through pass as well Second clip I'm going to show you again is just, um, again, it's just that moment again of um, initially losing the ball and then reacting really, really quickly. Um, and as you can see here, so the Reds are keeping good possession um, from that initial kind of losing it um, and obviously playing it. So this, this last one, same thing again. So we're just, again, looking at those moments where in comfortable possession, as you can see here from the greens, keeping the ball, moving the ball, using through and around, um, keeping the ball really, really, really nicely, really crisp passes. And then obviously having these moments now where um, they lose it here, apologies about the video, but lose it here a little bit uh, and then obviously win it back here. A um, little bit of dribbling, look as you can see, a little bit of twisting and turning, using those skills we did in the technical part, finding a, a good pass and a free play and then bang, back into the shape again and then back to keeping that possession. So it's just those moments I keep talking about, like those moments where um, you, you're in possession, um, you're obviously, it could be attacking, you could be playing out from your own goalkeeper um, where someone makes a mistake and you immediately kind of win the ball back, get back in your shape and, and go again and see if you can get in the opposition's half. Or it might be a case, and when you watch the top teams, when you watch Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal, they are unbelievable at sustaining attacks through uh, this defensive transition and through reacting really quickly and smothering the ball, smothering the opposition so they've got nowhere to go, and then they can continue to attack and to probe um, in those in those moments. Um, 
but yeah, that, those practices, those positional practices are brilliant for, for that type of thing, um, as you can see there. And, and it's a really good one for the kids as well. They and the players, they they love those these types of practices um, where it's it's quite tight, keeping possession, and then you have to really have to quickly and react and, and get the ball back and keep possession again. So after that, so the final part um, of session one um, was we went into a, um, a, a re another React game, but this was a, a 3v3. Um, and again, we had um, the uh, attacking players in possession um, and, kind of, and obviously attacking and then going into um, that defensive transition mode of reacting quickly. So again, from having the ball to going without it and then trying to win it back quickly. Um, real simple setup in terms of um, this, this practice. Um, so... Basically, what it was was we had three attacking players there, as you can see from the picture. So three attacking players um, in the white, and they had a ball each. Um, and they're going to perform three finishes on the goal uh, unopposed. Um, and then as soon as the three finishes are done, um, the three reds at the top of the screen there, they're going to jump out with the ball um, and try and score in this little goal um, at the end here as well. Um, and um, obviously, we're looking for the white team to, to react and force a mistake. Um, and obviously in an ideal situation they'll regain possession and they'll have another chance at scoring on the goal but effectively three finishes and then into a 3v3 um, and all we did was with the finishes was um, we started off on the left hand side here with the white number 11 plays into the coach who bounces it back and then they have a finish on goal from an angle they'll then link up with the number nine um, in terms of um, a little one two with the number nine and a finish on goal and then the nine will link up with the seven or in this case, drive down the side, put in a cross, and then we'll finish. And then they're in, into that moment of reacting um, to the Reds um, and trying to put in the initial pressure on straight away. And what's important here as well is like in this particular uh, practice is that um, we get pressure on the ball straight away, but we also try and get into a little bit of a compact state so that the players, uh, the Reds can't play through. They have to go around. And um, one little thing I did in terms of um, the practice here as well is like we had a central goal for the Reds to attack in, like you can see on the picture here. Um, but we also had two little gates on the side as well, which the Reds could drive through as well. So, And we talked to the Whites about trying to force them down the sides. Um, and the, the Reds got one point for um, scoring in the, little, in the gates on either side, and they got two points for scoring the goal. So we said to the Whites, look, try and keep them away from the goal, central areas and through passes, and try and keep them down the sides. Area size was 36 by 44. So um, lengthwise, it was two penalty areas, and then obviously the width of the penalty area. Um, we had 15 players, so we had um, we, we we effectively split the players into defenders and attackers. Um, so we had about six six or seven on each side, um, and we played um, about three or four uh, games of four minutes, um, which was ended up about 12 to 15 minutes. Um, but the weather was a bit dicey on on this particular occasion than today. It's like it was quite windy and cold, and as you can see from the some of the uh, attire that the players are wearing, um, we don't we don't usually chain outside too much in the cold. So, part one, I'll just show you the setup. So as you can see here, the first one. So a little link up with the coach, uh, and then obviously fire into the goal. A little link up with the number nine, um, same thing. Have a shot on goal, and we did a link up with the wide player who then roamed down the sides as a touch, and then provides a cross for the players to run into and finish on. And then immediately you're into that kind of that transition of defending. Um, and here the Reds are, Reds are attacking um, and obviously we're looking for the Yellows to, to spoil it and, and win the ball back and score. So the couple of moments I want to talk to you about again, um, so in possession. So obviously as soon as the, the uh, finishes are done, we're looking for that reaction and how quick the players can react from. Uh, and sometimes it can be like this. It can be a miss uh, of the target, can be a miss of the goal. But looking for those reactions now, bam, just pause it there as well. So what you find with young players as well is like um, when they make a mistake, or and, and that happens all the time, when they make a bad pass or they make a bad shot, or in this case, sometimes like the miss from a yard or two away from the goal, they kind of get stuck in that moment. And it's kind of like trying to get them to switch from that moment onto the defensive part um, and obviously creating um, that pressure on the ball and then having a bit of a compact state as well. And the boys do this to a really uh, good level here as well. So what you'll see is here is there's an initial pressure on the ball, which forces the player back, which is great. You can see that the shape's not too bad in terms of the compact. Um, good follow of the mark there from the wide right player. Uh, and then obviously doubling up on the on the player at the at the end there just to, just to force a mistake and, and force the ball out of play. Again, I'm just going to pause it here. What we say to players as well is like that... Um, uh, try not to try to steal the ball in these moments so like if you're in the 1v1 or if you get to the point in that situation there where the two players were doubled up um, then try and steal the ball and, and obviously have having an, another attack on goal as well rather than just kicking it out and giving giving the play to to the opposition again so again starting with the three um, the, the three finishes um, and as you'll see here so just working it working it down the side like the front three might do 
Um, and then obviously as soon as the last one goes in, bang, then reacting again. I'm just going to pause it there as well. So look at the, if you can look at there in the initial, I know it, you might need your binoculars, but if you can see here, look where um, there's initial pressure on the ball of the player who starts with it uh, in the centre and then he plays it wide uh, to the wider one. Um, we've got pressure on the central one. We're about to get pressure on the, uh, on the wide one. And then if you can just see um, the other player um, in the of the three and um, the left player is just coming across to create that compact state um, and again like again that moment there where he could have he could have stolen it um, instead he's, he kicked it out and obviously in a game that's given the ball back to the opposition so just encouraging the player to try and steal it and then have another attack and goal but again real simple straightforward practice um, to work on that defensive transition and then that react moment um, and obviously having that kind of being in possession um, and executing um, possession or passes or finishes in this case and then reacting to losing possession um, as quick as possible not having those moments of disappointment after the mistake but real real good games um, and uh, real good um, exercises for the players to work on those moments. Okay guys, um, that's it for our first episode of this brand new Coaching Journey 2. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. Um, if you're brand new to our YouTube channel, then please make sure you hit the subscribe button. Um, if you like the video, then please hit the like. Um, and if you've got any questions or comments um, about the video or the content of the video, then please make sure you put that in the comments down below. Um, and as I mentioned a couple of times um, through the uh, video, um, our brand new website, positionspecific.com, is now live um, where you can get access to all of our content. Um, like I mentioned before, it's not just a kind of um, lots of sessions, um, lots of practices um, out there in a random kind of order. Um, everything is structured um, for uh, coaches um, of all different age groups, whether you're working at grassroots, um, like this particular coaching journey, or whether you're working at the elite level. Um, it's all structured um, in a way um, of age and stage of development. Um, and if you are a coach of a team um, and you really like our stuff and you're following the coaches kind of training, you can also get your players to join the individual player development um, plan um, and they can follow along and do practices at home um, that mirror um, what you are talking about um, in your training sessions as well. So it's really good for coaches kind of education and development um, and it's brilliant for your players um, to follow along. Um, and develop themselves away from practice as well. Um, but the website's there, it's it's all up and running. Um, so go and check it out. Um, have a look at all the plans and prices. Um, there's a few free videos on there as well for you to get stuck into um, and give you an, uh, an idea of what we're all about. Um, but until next time, thank you very much.